Hey guys, welcome to another video. A lot of people don't fully understand what sustainability looks like. There are many misconceptions. Today, I wanted to debunk a few of the myths about sustainability so that you can know the truth behind what it really is and what sustainability looks like. Myth number one. Sustainability is expensive. This is definitely a myth. However, it definitely also can have some effects. For example, our president currently thinks the previous action plan Barack Obama had set up was too expensive, not worth the price. And I have a blog on voting and maybe why you should consider who you vote for, uh, which will be linked down below. And although climate is a priority, I, I kind of do understand why it might seem risky or like we would be investing too much in our planet. But most of my readers are not the president or people in Senate, so really a lot of you guys could just make some simple, easy lifestyle changes to help produce less waste, not consume as much, and overall use too much energy in an unsustainable way. Yes, the government needs to support businesses, but the businesses need to see that their customers want a sustainable future. So if we all did our part to show businesses that, it would really help the cost of sustainability. Sustainability means you have to collect trash in jars. What a myth, wow. Sustainability is definitely not collecting trash in jars. Is the lighting better? Okay. Sustainability is not as aesthetically pleasing as some of us environmentalists try to make it. You can still put trash in trash cans. It's just important to watch how much you are producing. To most people, it's unreasonable to keep a year's worth of trash in jars in your house. I think just setting limits is a much more realistic and practical approach. Also, sustainability is so much more than the amount of trash you make. And although that's important, sustainability is also, and probably more even, about the foods you eat, the clothes you wear, the form of transportation you take, the energy and water you use, and the beliefs you express in your everyday life. In my opinion, it's much more environmentally friendly to eat a plastic-wrapped veggie burger than a zero-waste hamburger. Plastic is worth a cow's life. But if you can find a zero waste hamburger, like comment below. Myth number three, sustainability is unhygienic. I get it, I get where you're coming from. But again, this does not have to be the case. I will argue that unless you participate in like rigorous exercise daily, it's unnecessary to shower every single day. It really depends on how you feel, but consider your actions and make sure they are intentional. In most cases, water usage is the reason hygienic practices are considered unsustainable. This could just be fixed in a lot of ways. Take shorter showers, wash your hair less frequently, only wash your clothes when they're actually dirty, don't wash a clean shirt, and wash things in cold water and air dry. Some people think reusables are also unhygienic, and if you feel that way, about a particular product, then just focus on what you are willing to do. No one says you have to shower in the water you cooked your beans in and then drink it. Even I think that's gross. Or use reusable toilet paper. Instead, think about what you can do and maybe try like recycled toilet paper or bamboo. I have to have solar panels to be sustainable. Solar panels, like any single sustainability feature, are not only just a small help, but also a large problem. Solar panels do not just make someone sustainable or not. You are not unsustainable if you don't have them. In fact, I don't have solar panels on my house. We are connected to a solar farm, which I strongly recommend anyone do because anyone can, but really it's about whether solar panels are the right choice for you. And if they, if they are, then great, that's something you can do if you can. Uh, but if they're not, then, then don't fuss about it. You don't need solar panels. So many environmentalists, especially here on YouTube, don't actually have solar panels. And it doesn't make us unsustainable. And really, most people get solar to just have the economic benefit. So it doesn't reflect your sustainability practices at all. If you do want to know a little bit more about going solar, you can check out my video linked below or the blog post that goes with it. All you have to do is recycle. Okay, so recycling is great for our planet and 
giving resources a second life and saving energy, but it's really the bare minimum of sustainable actions. Most zero wasters actually try to avoid recycling at all costs, especially because only 9% of materials such as plastic actually get successfully recycled. And most of those get downcycled because of the quality. So much of what you recycle really just ends up in a landfill and makes you feel a little less guilty about it. Recycling is still an important practice, but I think it's last of the many R's for a reason. It's much more important to reduce, reuse, repair, rethink, repurpose, rot, and refuse. All of those before recycling. Recycling is a last resort. Someone else will pick up my trash. <laughs> I'm talking to all you boomers out there reading my blogs. In fact, um, the majority of my viewers are older people. I don't wanna hate on anyone, but this is what it seems the mindset was when you guys were probably my age. No one wants to pick up someone else's trash, believe me, let alone their own. I always think about it like this. If I won't be responsible for waste, who will be? Right, if you're watching me, you care about the earth. If you're not gonna pick up trash, who will? We can't just lazily litter hoping someone else will come around and pick it up for us. A few weeks ago, I actually went outside and picked up some litter. I picked, I made many bags full of litter by the local lake we have and it was just so upsetting. And unfortunately, there aren't enough people who are just willing to go do that, right? I am one of a few who will go outside and pick up litter. And I tried to get some Instagram followers to encourage them to do the same, but you know, it's really, it's really, no one wants to take time out of their day to pick up someone else's trash. There's also, I can't make a difference or littering once won't make a difference. This is a huge problem and myth that needs to be debunked. You can make a huge difference, uh, and repeating bad actions multiple times can kill the environment, while repeating good actions has so many benefits. Even just one earth-friendly choice can make an impact. For example, choosing a veggie burger just once over a hamburger can be the difference of life or death for a cow and the reproduction of more in an unethical and unenvironmentally friendly way. People tend to have similar thoughts about water and energy or littering. Uh, keeping a light on overnight once might not be the most harmful choice, but if you do this every night for your whole life, that's a lot, a lot of energy. And that's a lot more than you are trying to intentionally use. And same with showering. Showering once might be the tiniest fraction of Earth's water, but when 7.5 billion other people do this every day, it's unsustainable and thankfully that's not that's not the point we're at right now uh, not everyone is showering because of different people's circumstances or, or how much someone wants to even shower lastly littering once isn't all that bad just kidding it is littering is never a good thing and it isn't all that bad until a fish ends up eating your plastic and then that ends up in your food and you eat it or it breaks down and produces CO2 in the process. You repeat enough times, it becomes a major problem and it will affect you eventually. So now you know the truth and I hope I opened up your eyes a little bit to some of these myths. Uh, you know what you should do, you know what you shouldn't. Uh, I know you should give this video a like and subscribe and comment and share it because support my channel and help the YouTube algorithm find so other people can find me. I would really love that. But if not, do whatever floats your boat and hopefully your boat will still float when the ocean is filled with plastic. All right, for now, peace.